she's throwing a bit of a fit right now. So I just kind of look ridiculous standing out here in the rain, trying to get my dog to come to me. I'm Zach George, I train dogs, and this is my new dog, Inertia. I'm taking you along as I train her from day one. You can start from the beginning or pick up anywhere and start learning. Welcome to the dog training experience. In this episode, we'll start to teach Inertia to heal, continue working on minimizing her crying in the crate, do some leash walking and more. Indy is our older dog and we've got a special surprise for her this month. Super Chewer is a monthly subscription box from the makers of BarkBox. They designed this specific line for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Every month you get a bunch of awesome, super durable toys and treats designed for really tough, strong chewers. You're always gonna get two really tough, innovative toys and every box comes with two meaty chews and two full-sized bags of treats. And if you want, you can also opt to get an extra special bonus toy every month. Monthly boxes are themed based on different types of play and senses, like this is the fetch box. But they also have all kinds of other stimulating themes, like sense and nose work, and interactive puzzle toys and more. Bark really stands behind these products. If your dog manages to destroy one of these, they'll replace it, no questions asked. You can just see how tough this thing is. I mean, look at this. You don't get plush soft toys. If your dog destroys those, get the Super Chewer box. And you get two great chews. I'll give these to you later. And Indy, I think this has gotta be your favorite part. These are always gonna be top-notch quality treats. Super Chewer boxes are a $45 value and plans start at $29 a month and they're available in the U.S. and Canada. Get a free Super Chewer when you sign up for a 6 or 12 month plan. Wait a minute. Visit superchewer.com slash Zach F-E-M. I'll have a link below. Plus get free shipping for life in the contiguous 48 states. Today I have a lot of training lined up for inertia and I usually like to precede my training sessions with a light game of fetch just to kind of let her get some of that playful enthusiasm out. It kind of helps her to focus. Plus it gets all of those wonderful brain chemicals working that make training so much fun. Please don't jump on the furniture. Come on, bring it to me. I swear, she waits for the camera to start and then she's like, no rules. Right now, when she does jump on the furniture, I'm encouraging her to get off and then I'm focusing on moving on with the lesson. Let go. Go get it. Yeah. Bring it to me. As you can see, I'm still struggling to get her to bring back the toy. I'm gonna switch toys though right now because she's so into this other one. With some toys, she'll bring them back more reliably than others. She seems extra interested in that one. Let's see how she does with this one. Let go. Go get it. Come on. This way, come on. Let's go. I'm opting to slow down the pace of this lesson and give her a chance to think it through. Thank you. Yes, let go. Good, so there she showed the initiative to bring it to me. Can I have it? <laughs> Perfect, let go. So she really likes this toy too, but that other one just had her really intrigued in a way that almost caused her to be overly excited. She's definitely about to try to jump on that chair. So there I intercepted her because she was thinking about jumping on there it looked like, so I tried to get in the way. Come on, let's go. Good job, let go. Since her fetch is getting a little more reliable here, I'm going to start to integrate some practice on her basic skills, things that she's gotten pretty reliable at, like sit, for example. Using toys as currency can yield incredible results, but it takes a bit of time to teach a dog that a single toss of a toy can be earned in exchange for listening to various requests. This is a great way to sneak in some extra practice while your dog is in this excited frame of mind. She got on the furniture. Come on, this way, let's go. Good job. She's pretty responsive when I encourage her happily to get off the furniture, no need to yell at her. Do your best to be ahead of your dog in order to prevent unwanted behaviors like jumping on the furniture. Let's work on hug. Sit. Using toys Wait. as a reward is not a smooth process at first with most dogs. No. So Sit. be prepared to work through this Wait. new concept with them over many hug. training sessions. See, she does it a lot more excitedly for a toy than she will for a treat, but I want her to do that more calmly. Sit. Look at me. Wait. Hug. Wait. Almost. If I were to do it with treats, she would go right up there all politely and calmly, but I want to be able to use toys as a currency, so the key is encouraging calmness while playing and really trying to get that excitement converted into focus. Sit. <laughs> Wait. Hugs. Wait. Wait. Okay, good job. So a little tug and a short toss should let her know that honoring my request is likely to get her something she values, in this case, play. So in the way that I'm asking her to do a sit or the hug, I'm not gonna ask her to do a skill like that every single time I throw, 
you know, I'll probably go ahead and throw three in a row now because she really enjoys that. I don't want to put a major buzz kill on the game by turning it all into school. Let go. Interesting, reluctant to let go there. That's a new development. We'll see if that continues. Let's try stand and wave. That's a little more challenging. Wait, wave. Over here, no ma'am. Wait, look at me. Wave. Yes, okay, good, perfect. Good, get it, go. Now that she's had a little bit of exercise in, I'm gonna switch up my currencies into our typical training session. Look how she's excited and jumping on me. I bet you when she discovers I've got food, she's gonna get all polite. She's probably gonna go into her sit. See that, you're so predictable. When you're using food as a currency, it has a way of getting your dog to behave a little more ideally. It's a little easier to communicate with most dogs when you're using a real high value currency. So let's do an update on turn. Turn is valuable later on when it comes to putting your dog in various positions. The objective is basically to have her turn and pivot on those front feet like this so that I can eventually put her into the heel position, which I'll update you on in a second. Here, turn. Okay. Oh, I like that. So she actually went the other way, but she just volunteered that. So I'm gonna actually jackpot that because that was a beautiful looking turn. Heel is where your dog gets in position right beside you, very close to your thigh. It's really handy when you're in urban settings or you just want to teach your dog this skill of staying near you for whatever reason. But keep in mind, when you're teaching your dog a heel, it's only done for short periods of time. In other words, a lot of people think that's how you're supposed to walk your dog full time and that's not realistic. The more realistic way to walk your dog is to keep them within four to six feet of you on a loose leash. Wait. Look at me. Wait. Yes. No. Wait. Yes. Wait. Turn. Yes. Good. I don't really want her going into that sit, but I like that she's turning. So we're still early stages on this. Stand. And see right here, she's a bit confused. She's like, what do you mean? I want her to basically stay standing and do this motion. That's what we're going for here. Wait. Let me get her warmed up with weight. Good. Turn. Still pretty good. Cause see, she's getting real close to my thighs. Still a little in front of me, but I want her over here. But again, we're not gonna be that picky at this point in her training. Turn. Let me see if I can intercept that sit though. Turn. Yes! So I gave her an enthusiastic yes just before her butt hit the ground. And I'm hoping for her to be like, whoa, I better not sit. I did something right right there. That's the reaction I'm trying to elicit from her. Stand, wait, turn. Yes, good. Right there, she didn't sit. Do you see how I intercepted her? Even though this is sloppy, I'm rewarding the fact that she didn't sit. So you have to really reward small efforts. Wait, look at me, turn. Yes, yes, oh, that's so good. So this is new territory. Again, not a good heel, but I'm trying to break this habit that she has of going into the sit. We're gonna continue to work on this. There's obviously a lot to work out to get her into that heel position, but that's not gonna stop us from working on walking at heel just a few feet at a time. So I want to make sure that I can get a decent heel in here before I ever expect her to do it anywhere else because this is the easiest training environment because she spends the most time training in here or in the house. You can have your dog heel on the right, left, both sides. It really doesn't matter. I'm starting with a left heel though. The goal here is to keep inertia on one side of me while I move and a good heel takes many months to perfect. We're gonna do this off leash. There's no need to use a leash when teaching heel because the leash isn't how you communicate with your dog. Look at me. Getting eye contact is essential for heel. Your dog really needs to check in with you extremely often, if not completely stare at you. Okay, let's go. Yes, see that? Half a step. And look at that, she's already out of heel, but I just got her to stay near me. Okay, let's go. Yes, wait. Yes, yes, I love that she's holding a stand position and not going into a sit right now. Okay, look at me, yes, good. A turn, I'm just gonna actually kind of lure her to keep her close, yep. Okay, let's go. Ah, starting to get too, too far ahead there, so I'm gonna actually bring it back. It's really important that your dog stay just to your side for a heel. Yes, very good. Wait, look at me, okay, yes. Okay, yes, ooh, no, never mind. She got too angled, wanna break that habit from the beginning. Let's go, sit. Yes, I suspected she was about to walk ahead, so I wanted to catch her succeeding. Look at me. Okay, let's go. Yes. Okay. Yes. Look at me. Okay, yes. 
that was a wonderful example of where we are on heel. Small steps, literally speaking. But heel is a great exercise to not only teach your dog how to walk nicely in small spurts, it's a great exercise in building overall communication, which is why I love teaching it. Play dead. You're amazing. Come alive. Good job. Wait. Hug. Okay, put, put, put your foot over there. You know how to do this. Thank you. So hug is looking really good. And this is a handy skill, putting your paws up on something. Good job. For example, we've been working on this variation. Yes. Wait. Look at me. Yes. Because I'm trying to get her eyes off of the treat. Like if I hold it right there, she's like really staring at it. Look at me. Yes, very nice. I want to eventually be able to have her look in various directions. That's the thing, you sometimes don't realize when you're teaching something that it can turn into something else and they start generalizing these skills. Check this out on the other leg. No training at all. I mean, it gets to a point where your dog is just like, oh, okay, I know how to do that. And that's what we're working on. So really good communication here. Look at me. It might not look like much to have her do it on a different leg, but that's a significant variable change. And let's see how back stall is going. Wait, stall, good, okay, good job. So encouraging her not to jump, to get down safely. I'm also staying very low to the ground. Another great communication building exercise. After training, I put Inertia up for a nap, but she's not too enthused about it. She's throwing a bit of a fit right now. This is something we've been working through. She obviously wants to be out here and I want her to be out here. So I'm doing this little game where when she's quiet, I get real close. Good, quiet. So I'm teaching her that if she wants out, there's a protocol to be let out. Makes me go farther away, farther away. <coughs> farther away. Yes, I'm gonna stop. She got quiet for a moment. See that? She's trying, she's really trying. And this is clearly just frustration on her part. Now, if I hadn't exercised her, if I hadn't been working with her earlier today, then this would be much more understandable. But she's had quite a bit of time with me today. You know, now is a good time to remind you that I cover all basic training in my books, including dealing with behaviors like crying and whining. Yes. The reward, by the way, if you're wondering, is being let out. I'm gonna be using the environment as the currency. That's what she wants. By the way, if this was the first exercise I'd been doing, this would be asking way too much, but this is at the point where she is, I think. I'm gonna be looking for the automatic wait. I'm not gonna tell her to. This should be no problem. She's nailing this one. Okay, looks like I pushed her a little too far there. Let me put her back into the crate and see if we can try again. Yes, very good. So we're gonna try that again. I'm not gonna make her suffer here. Okay. Yes. Sometimes some tough love like that is necessary. It breaks my heart to see her have any anxiety at all, but she also needs to learn that sometimes she has to be alone. I want her to be well-mannered as much of the time as possible, but while balancing that with the fact that she's only 15 weeks old. You can see the leash biting, still an issue. This has been an ongoing issue since she was eight weeks, so this is literally an issue we've been working on for seven straight weeks. This is how powerful Mother Nature is because she's teething. Inertia, come here, leave it alone. Yes, stand, wait, yes. All right, she's all warmed up. Let's get on with leash training. The reason we're doing walking in the house is just to really teach her how to stay close to me in an environment that's different than the last one that I practiced in, but still relatively easy. Now I'm gonna put the leash on her just so she's comfortable with the leash on, but I don't intend to use the leash at all during this training session, even though it's a leash walking training session. That might seem counterintuitive, right? But it's a variable. I want her to know that this thing attaches to her. Sometimes there's tension on it when she pulls ahead. If nothing else, just to know, hey, there's something that has weight that's gonna be around you. And it's a good opportunity to practice leash biting as well. So we're gonna walk back and forth right here and see how she does. Are you ready? Let's go. This way. Come here. Good. Perfect. All right. Let's go up here. Look at me. And you can see that look at me, how important it is because your dog's attention starts to wane. Right here at the jumping, the leash biting. Let's go. She's gonna put her into a sit. I'm gonna randomly reward on that because that sit's extremely reliable. If she thinks there's even a chance of her getting a treat, 
she's gonna hit that sit very close to 100% of the time. Okay, look at me, sit. Yes, good. This way. Look at me, please. Yes, I was patient there. I said, look at me, please, waited. And then I figured she would remember. I hope you're getting a sense as to a realistic time scale to get some of these basic things taught. And I would consider this pretty rapid for her. So if it takes longer than this, that would also be completely normal. She started to walk ahead there and pull, and I just kept the leash anchored to my hip so that she couldn't advance. I didn't pull back, but this is part of managing her and keeping her close. You need cumulative hours of this type of training indoors before you can expect to have this even remotely reliable in an outdoor environment. That's probably like five minute sessions here and there dedicated to leash walking in your house or in a familiar area for your dog. When you throw them in the deep end without preparing them, you're likely to get all sorts of reactions from your dog. Anything from overexcitement to nervousness, phasing in, distracting environments is extremely important. Not bad. I think it's time to go into the real world and train. We're not gonna let bad weather stop us. I'm at a brand new place. This is actually a pretty classic place in New Orleans. This is the Peristyle in City Park. And we were just coming out here to the park to do some socializing and it started raining. So we found shelter here. This is as good a place as any to do some socializing or inertia. It looks like another passerby is also seeking shelter from the rain. So it'll be a little challenging to keep inertia's attention. Inertia, come. Good. Notice, heavy reward on come when called. I'm in a brand new place. I'm gonna do my best to make sure that she really enjoys coming to me. It's a fine line. I really want her to smell and explore this environment, but I don't want her licking the ground or picking things up. I'll have to really manage her here. She's feeling a little anxious. I'm gonna let her go out. The rain's letting up a little bit. There's no reason she can't get a little wet. In fact, it's probably good for her if she does. Sometimes your dog will have to encounter rain in the real world. Best to expose it to them in a situation like this where you have good control. So I can easily take shelter if the rain becomes too much or if she becomes nervous. Inertia, come. Leave it alone. Okay. She's unresponsive right now. So I just kind of look ridiculous standing out here in the rain, trying to get my dog to come to me. Come on, let's go. Yes. There we go. Got it, got it. Good job. Here you go. I'm gonna give her a big reward for that. I just stuck with her. My next step, if she didn't listen, I was just gonna pick her up and bring her over here. But fortunately, I didn't have to do that. She hasn't explored this corner at all yet. You can see she's really interested in everything. And we're gonna give her a lot of leeway and a lot of tolerance because we're taking into account that she's 15 weeks old. Exposure to things like this is really important before you expect them to just listen to you all the time everywhere. We have the faint distant sound of thunder. We we have birds in the background and light rain. She's not reacting in a way that makes me think she's nervous or scared by the thunder, as many dogs often are. Come on, yes, good girl. Do you want some chicken? Can't hurt to give her some chicken every time the thunder and lightning occur. That way we condition her. I don't want to let her get too close to the water's edge there. I'm gonna pick her up and bring her over here because in a situation like that, if she starts really getting resistant, I've got to take her safety into account. Let's go. Come on. Gonna let her get ahead. This isn't really disciplined leash walking here. This is one of our first times being able to take her fully in public due to her vaccination status now being up to date. She has the green light from her vet. Inertia, this way. Oh, good. Now she's really more responsive. Inertia, back this way. Come on. Bye. <laughs> good work. Okay, now let's go this way. <laughs> That's really good. That's responsive. And in this case, the, the environment, the action continuing seems to be enough incentive for her where rewarding with treats is less necessary. So I'm using her surroundings as her currency in this instance. What I hope to demonstrate on this final pass here is that she is hopefully more responsive than she was the first time because this area has become more familiar to her. So if it's more familiar, she's like, oh yeah, I've been here before. Let's go, come on. Gotta leave it alone. There's some food on the ground. It's a bone. It's an animal bone right there. See, I didn't even plant that. That's real. <laughs> leave it alone. You cannot have that. Okay, come here. Leave it. 
inertia this way. Sit. Thank you. There we go. So we got her into a sit. It was a little tough to get her attention, to be honest with you right there. Okay, we're gonna go this way. Let's go, come on. Bye. It's been really working to say bye. She's like, oh no, don't leave. Oh, we've just had a crowd of people appear behind us. I don't want her just trying to pull towards those people. Wait, look at me. Hey, inertia, sit. Look at me, yes, do you want that? Okay. Overstimulating situation. It's like, I wanna know more about those people over there. But she can't think that we're just gonna go up to everyone just cause they're there. Look at me. Yes. I'm practicing look at me because this is a really good opportunity to encourage her to look up at me with distractions, mild distractions in the distance. Good. I'm gonna now turn around to make it a little bit easier and I'm gonna go that way. Look at me. Up here. Oh, can't get her attention on me. This is so interesting. Come on, this way. Let's go. Come on, yes, good girl. So I just encouraged her to follow me there. Good job. All right, now I'm gonna stop here. Sit, will you give me a sit? The ground scents are overpowering. I'm really probably pushing her too much here. I'm just gonna let her go this way right now because she's a little overwhelmed and I don't want her to be frustrated, so I'm gonna give her a break. It's that balance you have to strike. I mean, read your dog. You'd be amazed what a five minute break can do. After an exciting outing like that, this is a good time to let her play with Indy. She'll be a little bit slower right now. Indy's got some pep in her step. Inertia and Indiana have been playing pretty frequently like this. Indy does a pretty good job of letting Inertia know when she's had it, and she still has really measured, reasonable responses. Go pick up your free extra Super Chewer box when you sign up for a six or 12 month subscription. I'll have a link below. Get to know us more and keep up in real time on Instagram and TikTok. Subscribe and click the bell notification to be notified every time we upload a video and get one or both of my books too. I'll have all of the links below. In the next episode, we'll try to get Inertia's counter surfing under control, do more training in public. We'll do a play date with Lola the Silky. We'll leave Inertia alone while we go grocery shopping and see how she does and more. Sure.